Hello and welcome to this video on reaction feasibility. The equations that you can see on the screen are all in the front of your data book. However, you do need to know what they are and what they're used for. The first equation is the standard enthalpy change for our reaction, where you add up the standard enthalpy of formation for all of the products minus the standard enthalpy of formation of the reactants. The standard Entropy change is the standard entropy of the products minus the standard entropy of the reactants and the standard Gibbs free energy change is the standard Gibbs free energy formation for the products minus the standard Gibbs free energy of the reactants. Enthalpy change tells us if a reaction is exo or endothermic but it does not tell us if a reaction is feasible. Entropy change tells us if there is an increase or decrease in disorder of the reaction and Gibbs free energy combines the two to allow us to see if the reaction is feasible. If the Gibbs free energy change is below zero, then this means the reaction is feasible as written. If the Gibbs free energy is zero, then this means this can be a reaction at equilibrium. And if it's positive, then the reaction is not feasible as written and the reverse reaction will be feasible. We can combine the three into an equation where we have Gibbs change in Gibbs free energy equals enthalpy change minus T temperature in Kelvin multiplied by the entropy change. The enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change associated with making one mole of a compound from its element it's in standard states. Standard states are taken at 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere. An example would be to make methane An example would be to make methane from carbon. At 298 Kelvin and one atmosphere, carbon would be solid. Hydrogen would be a gas. And methane would also be a gas. We can use data given to us about enthalpy changes and entropy changes to allow us to calculate temperatures at which reactions would be feasible. The first thing that we're going to calculate is the enthalpy change for the reaction. This is delta H. We're going to add up the enthalpy changes of our products, shown here in yellow. So we have 130 plus negative 394. We're going to minus the enthalpy changes of our reactants, shown in pink. So we have minus 348 plus negative 110. If in the equation there were any coefficients, you would multiply the numbers by the coefficients. So here we have minus 264 minus negative 458. So in total, we'll have a positive enthalpy change of 194 kilojoules per mole. This is an endothermic reaction. We can now look at the entropy. The first thing you can do is to have a look at the equation itself and you'll be able to work out if it should be positive or negative. In this reaction we have solid zinc and gaseous carbon monoxide producing two gaseous products so our entropy should increase as we are going from a more ordered system to a less ordered system. Delta S is calculated in exactly the same way. We're going to take the entropy of our products, so 161 plus 214, and we're going to minus the entropy of our reactants, so 44 and 198. That gives us 375 minus 242, which gives us a positive enthalpy change of 133 joules per K per mole. This is one of the only situations where the standard unit is in joules and not kilojoules and you need to be careful of this for our next calculation. In the next calculation we're going to work out at what temperature would this reaction become feasible. We need to use our other equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Reactions become feasible at the point at which delta G is equal to zero so we can rearrange the equation for T. So 
such that t equals delta h divided by delta s. At this point you need to decide what units you're using. I prefer to use kilojoules per mole but it is personal preference so I'm going to change the delta s into kilojoules but you could equally change your delta h into joules. So here t will equal 194 divided by 0 0.133 where I've divided delta s by a thousand. You could also have 194,000 divided by 133 and you will get to the same answer. The temperature at which this reaction becomes feasible is 1458 Kelvin. So the temperatures that you get for these reactions all come out in Kelvin, so usually are larger numbers. Here is an example for you to try. You need to work out the standard enthalpy change, then the standard entropy change, and use this to work out if the reaction is feasible at 500 degrees C. For part A, we are looking at the standard enthalpy change. So our enthalpy change is going to be the enthalpy of our products minus the enthalpy of our reactants. So our product here is minus 239. There is no standard enthalpy of formation for an element in its standard state, such as oxygen. So the only reactant we're dealing with is methane. So our enthalpy change here is minus 164 kilojoules per mole. So an exothermic reaction. For part B, we're looking at the entropy change and again you want to have a look at the equation and work out if it'll be positive or negative first to give you an idea of what your final answer will be. You can see we're going from two gaseous reactants to a liquid product, so we're going to a more ordered system. So our entropy is decreasing. So we have delta S and we take our product, which is 127, minus the two reactants added together. So we have 187 plus a half times 205, a half because we have a half here in the reaction equation. So this gives us an entropy change of minus 162.5 joules per K per mole. For the final part of the question, we've been asked to calculate the free energy change at 500 degrees C. That means that we're going to be using delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. T is in Kelvin, so we need to change our temperature into Kelvin first. So we have 500 degrees C plus 273, 773 Kelvin. Delta G will equal the enthalpy change from before, which is minus 164, minus 773, multiplied by the entropy change, which I'm dividing by 1,000 to get into kilojoules, so we have minus 164 plus, as we've got two negatives there, 125.6, which gives us a delta G of negative 38.4 kilojoules per mole. That means that this reaction will be feasible as written as the Gibbs free energy change is a negative value. I hope that you found this video on reaction feasibility helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for updates on new videos.